Okay, so let's see if you remember enough basic math to solve this problem without using a calculator. So here is the question. We have 80% of 30 plus 40 divided by 4 times 5, all of this in parentheses. Okay, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, so one more time, 80% of 30 plus 40 divided by 4 times 5. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. The correct answer here is 64. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and A+. Plus if you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, it's been many years since I've done basic math. I totally forgot how to do this. Well, no big deal. I'm going to review exactly how to solve this basic math problem without using a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and get started right now. So what we have here is a numeric expression. We've got a whole bunch of numbers that are trying to express something. Matter of fact, they're trying to express a value, and we know what that value is. We had the answer. The answer is 64. Okay, now what's interesting about this problem is that we have a percent to deal with, but we don't have to deal with that percent right now. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. What we have to be thinking about is that we have a, a lot of different mathematical operations going on here. We have addition here, we have a division here, we have uh, multiplication here, we have parentheses going on. So uh, when it comes to mathematical operations, you need to do these operations in the correct order, okay? Because if you don't do this in the correct order, you will get this problem wrong, okay? For example, let's just take a look at this part. If you said, well, let me do 40 divided by four, that's 10. So 10 times five, that gives me 50, all right? So maybe some of you took that approach, but maybe uh, maybe others of you said, all right, I like this right here, four times five, that's 20. So 40 divided by 20, well, that's two. Well, you could see we just got two different results uh, and uh, what determined those results was the order, okay? So what, you know, what do we do? Do we do this first or do we do this first? Well, this is why we need to know this little thing right here called PEMDAS. This is an acronym. These letters stand for something. And I'm gonna explain exactly what these letters stand for, but this is our checklist. Uh, this is the correct order to do mathematics when we have various operations. So in mathematics, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, these are mathematical operators, things like powers. We need to know the correct order to do these things. Again, our little PEMDAS acronym here is our checklist. And the way this thing works is a checklist from left to right, okay? Now, before I explain to you what these letters uh, stand for, there is a lovely little phrase that will help you remember PEMDAS, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This thing has been around for many, many years. Uh, probably my great-grandparents were saying it way back in the good old days. But uh, there you go, PEMDAS, you need to understand this, okay? This is uh, absolutely critical, and let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so what does P stand for? P stands for parentheses, okay? So if you see parentheses, now we see parentheses here, so we're going to be thinking about parentheses in just one second, but uh, P stands for parentheses. You're gonna go to uh, parentheses. Now, if there are more parentheses in a problem, you go to the innermost first. But parentheses can also be brackets or these type of brackets, okay? Technically, uh, what we're talking about here are grouping symbols. So this is a group of numbers. These parentheses create a group, okay? A group of numbers, so these are grouping symbols. So again, that's what the P stands for. Okay, how about E? Well, E stands for, let's just kind of just check that off. E stands for powers, right? Like two to the third power. Now, somebody might be saying, well, why don't they just put another P here if that's what it stands for? Well, really, the E uh, stands for exponents. When you have a power like 2 to the third power, the little number in the top right up here is called the exponent, and the big number down here is called the base. The entire thing is called a power. Okay, so E stands for exponents, but you can think of this as powers. Now, here is the, uh, the first source of confusion for many of you out there. But before I tell you what that is, let's just go ahead and tell you what that is. Excuse me. Let's just go ahead and uh, answer what M, D, A, and S stand for. This is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Okay. Now, it would seem logical that we're going to do multiplication 
first, and then division, and then addition, then subtraction. If this is a checklist, it goes from left to right. And that's how a lot of people think about it, but that's uh, incorrect, okay? That is not the way PEMDAS works. These are actually groups. So the next thing we're gonna do is multiplication or division, multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So in other words, if we see multiplication first from left to right, we're gonna do that, uh, we're gonna do multiplication then division, but if we see division first and then multiplication, we're gonna do it this way. And you can kind of see, this is a little bit of a hint right here, that in fact, we're gonna to have to do this first. Now, I bet you many of you uh, did the multiplication first because you said, oh, it's gotta be multiplication, so you did that. Well, that was wrong. So that is a little kind of a, you know, look into the first um, kind of area of uh, confusion that a lot of people will have with this particular problem. Okay, so addition and subtraction works the same way. You're gonna do whatever uh, you see first from left to right. Okay, so now that you're all experts in the order of operations of PEMDAS, if you wanna go ahead and try this problem again, be my guest, just pause the video and see if you can come up with the correct answer, 64. All right, so let's put our knowledge of PEMDAS to work. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is, you know, you're gonna be thinking about this phrase all the way through this prompt. So you're like, all right, do I have any parentheses? Indeed we do, they're right here. So now I have to concentrate my efforts inside of the parentheses. So what we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna take care of this big math prompt inside of the parentheses, get that down to one number once we're done with that, and then we'll deal with 80% of that value. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And as promised, uh, this is where we need to um, start first with division, right? So let me write this up here, PEMDAS. Okay, so we're thinking about parentheses. There's no powers, right? So we don't have to worry about exponents, but we do have multiplication and division. What do I see first from left to right? Well, here is division. This is multiplication. I see division first from left to right. So this is what I got to do first. Okay, so 40 divided by four, pretty easy stuff. That would be 10. Okay, so I'm still working inside of the parentheses. The uh, P part of PEMDAS is not over with until you finish everything in here. And this is uh, hopefully pretty easy for you to see now. Here we have addition. This is multiplication. So certainly multiplication is going to trump uh, addition. So we're gonna do 10 times five, which of course is going to be 50. All right, so you can see uh, we're almost done. All we have to do is uh, take 30, add it to 50 and we'll be done with our parentheses part of that. And so we're down to 80% of 30 plus 50, which of course is 80. All right, so at this point, if you were able to get to this point and then you got confused with this percent part, again, we're doing this without the aid of a calculator. Well, that's very good, okay? Matter of fact, I will give you a nice happy face and maybe I'll give you like an A minus or something like that. That's, that's pretty good, okay? But for those of you that are basic math superstars, this is where it gets to, uh, to be interesting, right? How do we find 80% of 80 without a calculator? This is not difficult, and I'm gonna show you right now. But before I show you how to do that, I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you do that, hit that notification bell. This really helps me, okay? It helps my YouTube channel, helps the algorithm. My objective is to grow my math classroom as big as I possibly can. So I'm trying to reach people that are just generally interested in math and, uh, you know, and also really need help in mathematics. Unfortunately, um, they're, the numbers for math are not good. I'm talking about math education in terms of there's, you know, math teacher shortages. Uh, you know, right now uh, testing is not going well. You know, this doesn't have to be that way, right? And I feel very passionate about trying to reach people and teach them math in a clear and understandable way. Uh, so anyways, that's my objective. And by you subscribing, it does help me out. Matter of fact, this is the way I look right now as you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Back to the problem. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna get into percent, okay? Now, how do you find the percent of a number? Right. Well, if I said find 4% of 30, how would you do that? Okay, 4% of 30. So, of course, you can see I got some stuff going on here. But a lot of you would say, well, don't we take that percent and uh, move the decimal point over two places to the left and multiply it by 30? You would be correct. So, in other words, 4% or 4.0% 4 
is the same thing as 0 0.04, right? So we move the decimal point over two places to the left, and then we just multiply it by 30. And if we had our calculator, we could do that, or we could do it without our calculator as well. So that's how you find the percent of a number, all right? So let's go ahead and just look at this a little bit more closely. So 80% is the same thing as 0 0.80, because 80 percent is 80.0 percent and I can move that decimal point over two places to the left for those of you that remember how to change a percent to a decimal but let's just kind of really look at what's going on to change a percent to a decimal or to change a percent to a fraction the technical definition of percent if you will is we're comparing a number to 100 so really when you take any number like 80 and you divide it by 100 what happens is the decimal point moves over two places to the left. Okay, so when you think about, oh yeah, you move the, uh, the decimal point over two places to the left, well, that's the result of dividing by 100. Okay, so what we're going to do here is take our 80% and take that 80 and divide it by 100. Of course, that's equal to the decimal 0 0.80, but I like this fraction better. Okay, I'm not going to work with a decimal. I'm going to prefer to work with a fraction. Okay, so 80% is the same thing as 80 over 100 or 0.8. Now, when I have that 80 over 100, I can reduce this fraction quite easily, right? So 80 over 100, I could cross cancel those zeros there. That leaves me with 8 over 10. And 2 goes into 8, 4. And then 2 goes into 10, 5. All right, now, if some of you are a little bit like, wow, I forgot about fractions and decimals. Uh, if you need help with basic math, okay, if you do want to become a basic math certified professional, you got to check out my Math Foundations course. It's a little mini kind of boot camp course, uh, three chapters, but it goes over decimals, basic math operations, order of operations, um, fractions. It's a great uh, starting point for those of you that want to relearn math or just need help with kind of basic mathematics. You'll find a link to it in the description below. So if you're struggling with any of that stuff, check out that course. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on all these various topics like fractions, etc. Okay, so uh, what we have here is that 80 over 100. I'm sorry, did I say 80 over 10? If I did, I apologize. 80 over 100 uh, is now uh, the same as 4 fifths. Okay, four fifths, excuse me. <laughs> All right, so that's what we have. Now we can think of this problem this way, right? So 80% of 80 is going to be equal to 80% is the same thing as four fifths. Okay, so if I, now if I take this four fifths and multiply it by 80, I will have the correct answer. All right, so let's go and do that right now. So four fifths times 80 or 80 over one. Okay, now when you're multiplying fractions, you could just multiply the numerators and denominators. That's what we, uh, you know, for example, if I had two thirds times uh, one fifths, uh, the correct answer would be what? Two times one is two, three times five is 15. Okay, that is the correct answer. But you always wanna look for opportunities to cross cancel, okay? So here, uh, for example, when I'm, uh, you know, doing this without a calculator, you want to say, okay, four, uh, four or five times 80. So is 80 divisible by five? Hopefully some of you might say, oh yes, uh, five goes into 80 uh, 16 times, okay? So hopefully, you know, maybe you remember that. If you didn't, you could get to this answer by just multiplying four times 80 and then dividing that by five, or uh, yes, dividing by five. So now we have four times 16, all right? And of course, four times 16 is going to be 64. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in basic math, check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.